bring to you some uh, thoughts on 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. First, we're, we're told here to be sober and vigilant. What are we called to exactly when we're being asked, well, not being asked, being exhorted to be sober? Soberness has to do with being alert yeah. through temperance, earnestly thoughtful, serious-minded, not given to distractions through indulgence or in any excess which leads to distraction even in our most basic of activities such as eating, drinking, work, and other necessities of life. To be sober, that we should no longer live the rest of our time in the flesh after the lusts of men, but to do the will of God. And we're told to be vigilant. This is a watchful alertness in the face of potential danger or harm. That is that now, if need be, we are in heaviness through manifold temptations. In vigilance, we seek that our faith, though it be tried with fire, yeah. might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. We now endure suffering, suffering as a part of an ungodly world, filled with ungodly rulers, suffering as those persecuted for doing good, suffering as shepherds facing opposition to the gospel, and suffering as soldiers in a spiritual warfare. All suffering is a trial of our faith, and so we must be vigilant. But why are we specifically told to be sober and vigilant? Well, it's because we have an adversary, Amen. the devil. The devil is actually named well, because his, that name means adversary. So it's your adversary, the adversary. We do not struggle against flesh and blood. This is the enemy of God, the accuser of the brethren. Now he is a defeated foe, and yet he rages until his time comes. This is not an enemy of flesh and blood, but the enemy of our souls. His time is short, and yet, as the God of this world, he continues to persecute God's people, and even more vehemently as the day of Christ approaches. And so he is described as walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Walking about as a roaring lion. We've been speaking about this in bits and pieces in our conversations and lessons of late. This is a territorial communication. Proverbs 19.12 refers to the king's wrath is as a roar of a lion. Proverbs 28, 15, as a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is the wicked ruler over the poor people. This is a consuming and oppressive power-seeking behavior. Jesus said, a thief comes not but to steal and kill and destroy. Satan seeks to usurp and destroy what rightfully belongs to God. He attempted this in heaven, which resulted him in be being cast down. He did this in the garden when he challenged the authority and character of God. He did this by provoking Israel to seek its own king like other nations, rejecting God as their king. He did this by turning the people against God's prophets, sent to correct and judge the people. As Jeremiah 2.30 says, your own sword have devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. Then came prophecy through Isaiah, behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and the devil turned Israel against even him. Mm -hmm. When they said while insisting he be crucified, we have no king but Caesar. Mm -hmm. The devil is called the God of this world. And from that standpoint, his roar might seem legitimate. But the truth is he's under the authority of Christ. And what he's able to do now is still within Christ's say of what he's able to do. And his anger would have us think that he has more freedom than he really does. That's one of his ploys. Amen. This can tempt one to be angry, to despair, to worry, to doubt the promises of God. 
It's a nightly behavior for lions to roar and communicate their territories. The devil would have you think you're somehow out of God's reach, Mm -hmm. that you're not within the care of God or the attention of God, but this is a roar he can't back up unless you move out of faith into doubt. And that is why this is his ploy. This is also a predatory behavior. Amos 3, 4, will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? Roaring is one of a lion's strategies for catching prey. They creep up on their prey, and when they are close enough, they will let out a roar to confuse the animal, to strike fear into its heart, anticipating that it will be unable to react in such a way as to escape. So in this way, it's trying to catch, to trap its prey. The young lions roar after their prey, the psalmist said. Mm -hmm. Psalm 22, 13 says, They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. Mm -hmm. Fear, it's Satan's strategy to distract the children of God. Mm -hmm. His roar is meant to turn our eyes from the shepherd of our soul. Because he knows this will create instability. It makes us susceptible to his attack. But we're told, be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And James says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We're also told, if ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. So Satan roars, not from afar off, but from a place where he can snare you if your foot slips. So we're exhorted, be not carried away with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. And how is this done? It's done by standing steadfast in faith. Where faith persists, the devil resists and flees. Satan cannot take territory that God is presently occupying. By faith, God occupies our thoughts, our hearts, our desires, and our actions. We are established in faith, sanctified by faith. We're given boldness in faith. The scriptures state, whatever is not of faith is sin. Why is this? Because wherever faith is absent, we've left a void for Satan to fill. And he will not neglect a footfall, a foothold, as Ephesians says. We must be like the Thessalonians who are walking by faith. And in every trial, they were filled with faith and described as growing exceedingly. This commended them before God, before the brethren in their day, and it continues to commend them to us. We would so be the same way. While we do not want to be casual or dull in our awareness of our foe, we also have no cause to be dismayed when he billows threats so long as we stand in faith in Christ. God has not placed our feet on slippery places. We've been given hinds feet. We have not been left alone to traverse through this world. We have the hand of God leading us, the Son of God interceding for us, the Holy Spirit indwelling us. The armies of heaven have been dispatched by God to minister to us. The saints of God journey together. This is itself a protection. You even see this in the natural world, that where there are many, one foe, though he be violent, Mm -hmm. can be rendered ineffective. So we're looking to the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, at which time the devil and his angels will be cast into the lake of fire, and the only roar that will be heard is that of the prevailing lion of the tribe of Judah, and mortality will be swallowed up of life. This is our God, and his reign is now, and he set all things in in their boundaries, and his power is eternal. So when you hear your adversary roar, Remember, fear not them which kill the body, but are able to kill the soul, but and are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy soul and body in hell. When he roars through your enemies, remember, fret not thyselves because of evildoers. When he roars the threat of uncertainty and chaos, recall him who arose and rebuked the winds and the sea and created a great calm. 
When he roars in looming necessity, believe Jesus' word. Seek not that which you should eat and what you should drink. Neither be of doubtful mind. You might say, neither be anxious, neither be fearful. Amen. When his roar threatens, speak to your soul. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Amen. Remember the psalmist's words. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. Let us be exhorted and encouraged in our fight of faith, knowing that God is able to keep you from falling to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. For the Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from the holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. See, Satan goes about as a lion roaring, but the Lord is the true lion. Let us be exhorted and encouraged in our fight of faith. A thief cometh not but to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and have it a more abundantly. So let us stand fast, steadfast in the faith as Abraham, who staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. So let us be sober. Let us be vigilant. For the power of God in you causes you to be able to resist your adversary steadfast in the faith. We'll open with a word of prayer. Thank